If you're shopping for an SUV that's both long and luxurious, you could stick with a safe bet like the extended version of the Cadillac Escalade, or you could get at least a little adventurous and go with the Jeep Grand Wagoneer L. Not that this thing is made to tackle trails, but it's definitely different. And if it wasn't clear what that L stands for, just take a look at this thing. It is huge. More than just space, there is plenty of substance here too, but just be warned because none of it comes cheap. don't forget to share our channel and subscribe so you can catch some of this and maybe even a little of that. If you need a plus size premium SUV, your options aren't exactly abundant, even if you include more modestly sized ones like the Lexus LX. It's also hilarious to think of that as modestly sized, but that goes to show you just how massive this Grand Wagoneer L is. Yes, there is a regular wheelbase version of the Grand Wagoneer, but if you want this L version, it is long. It is 26 inches longer than the Lexus LX, just to give you a bit of perspective. That is the biggest Lexus you can buy. This thing is enormous. Now, technically, I think the Escalade is a little bit longer, but not by much. And there is so much room in here. Again, just to provide a little bit of context, there's about six inches more second row legroom than you get in the LX and about five and a half inches more third row legroom and i don't know what do you think i think it's pretty good what do you think it's not too bad and the same goes with the cargo room there is 1250 liters of space behind the third row that is about as much as you get in the lx with the third row folded i mean this thing is enormous it's crazy that jeep was able to provide so much space i'm gonna get to my drive impressions a little bit later on but i will say it doesn't necessarily feel as big as it is from behind the wheel. And I mean that in a good way. But again, we'll get to that a little later on because right now I wanna focus on some of the features that you get when you shell out the big bucks to get this grand version of Jeep's big old Wagoneer. Now, there is a Wagoneer that's more like the Chevy Tahoe or Suburban if you go with the Wagoneer L. Stepping up to this Grand Wagoneer, well, it's like an Escalade or a Lincoln Navigator. And I'd say this thing is just about as luxurious as either of those. I will say though, driving around with the radio off, filming today, a few more squeaks and rattles in some of these panels, especially here, this trim piece that's next to the screen where the ignition start stop button is, don't really love how loose and kind of how much play there is in that. That is not becoming of a vehicle that costs $110,000 to start or about $140,000 before tax in this tester I am driving. But overall, like I said, it is luxurious. It's premium feeling. But if the Escalade is like an Armani suit, this is more like a waxed canvas coat from a brand like Filson. It is expensive. Yes, it's rooted in workwear, but you wouldn't be out of place wearing that to a nice dinner at a high-end restaurant. If it's, you know, that new, crisp, nice look, it's classy, you can tell it's expensive. That's kind of how this cabin is. You open the door, especially with this caramel colored leather, just has that presence that you want. Now, if you don't want this, you can get all black. There's even a cool shade of blue that you can opt for instead, but it does look cool. It's got this real wood trim everywhere, the door panels over on the dash, as well as the console here and the second row console. And then in terms of features, pretty decked out. It's got like a 23 speaker stereo. And in this top trim I'm driving, it does have massaging front seats. And I know those aren't for everyone. My boss and your favorite co-host, Jody Lai, she's not a fan, but she's also pretty tiny for a big guy like me. They are awesome. I have been putting these ones to very good use this week. They time out after about 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm just constantly hitting that on button over and over again, and I like this rock climb setting, the way it works up your back. It is super relaxing, really nice. I will say these are some of the best massaging seats I have ever experienced. I will say though, 
if you are looking for the same functionality for the second row, you will not find that here. You will have to go with that Lincoln Navigator Reserve L and they're optional in that thing, but at least you can get them if you want, whereas they are not available in the Grand Wagoneer. That bums me out. Something else that bums me out about this front seat, just take a look at where this headrest is. It digs right into the back of my shoulder blades. And yes, I do have it as high as it will go. I've always kind of struggled with Stellantis' seats in the Ram 1500, not so crazy about those. Go figure, this thing shares a platform with that and some of the same issues exist here. Some of the other stuff you'll notice if you're tall like me, just how high these front seats are. Now, headroom isn't affected the way it is in the Ram 1500. As you can see, I have more than enough space. The big problem for me, the head-up display, it's almost entirely cut off, and yes, same thing. I have adjusted it. I've done everything I can to make it visible, but all I can see are the lane markings. I can't see the speed. I can't see the speed limit, the road I'm on, none of that important information. I'd be pretty upset if I shelled out big bucks for a vehicle and one of these key features was completely unusable. So that part I don't like, but just about everything in here is approachable, easy to use, very user-friendly, and none of those same issues. Take a look at this infotainment system, one of the best on the market. Now, you still get a physical volume knob. I like to see that, but this thing works a lot like a smartphone. So if you dive into the menu, you've got these little tile icons that look a lot like the ones on your iPhone or Android. This does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of them are wireless. And there's this cool device manager feature. So you can have multiple phones connected and then just quickly toggle between which one you want to have up on the screen. That's great if you're on a road trip and you're driving and you wanna prioritize your phone and then you switch with your partner and they can have their phone on there. You don't have to worry about switching, stopping, connecting. You can just toggle between them on the go. That is great. There's also this bank of physical climate controls. Awesome to see. And then you can get into the more fine details with this separate screen down here. That's also where you get those massaging seats and you can control the rear climate or passengers in the second row can do it from their own touchscreen. There's also a touchscreen in front of the front seat passenger. That is one of those features that does elevate this above some of its rivals. And then this one also has that rear seat entertainment system. So it's got a screen on each side for the second row occupants. Although I will say, I wonder just how useful that is th these days with kids and their iPads. I figure everybody's got their own and they can do what they want, what they need, watch what they want. But this thing does have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot if you want to connect your iPad or you can hook up a video game console with the HDMI ports for those rear seat occupants. Great for a road trip. And so is this air suspension. This thing is super comfortable. Does a great job of absorbing just about everything you encounter on the roads. Only the worst bumps and pressure cracks are felt. And even then, they're not so bad. This thing is just excellent. Super smooth and so is this powertrain. Now, unlike the Grand Wagoneer, the regular size one that I tested, I don't know, a little over a year ago, that thing had a 6.4 liter V8. Absolute pig. This thing, a little bit better. It's a straight six, twin turbocharged, high output in the Grand Wagoneer. It makes 510 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque, which is so much. And it also moves this big, monstrous SUV without any issues. I'm telling you, you are not going to miss the V8. It even sounds kind of good. I like it a lot. It pairs well with this eight-speed automatic transmission and this fully automatic full-time four-wheel drive system. Now, you can use this four-wheel drive lock setting if you want low-range gearing, but otherwise, it just does its thing and it does it very well. But regardless, you aren't gonna notice much of a difference at the fuel pumps because this is atrocious on gas. Officially, it's rated to burn 14.3 liters per 100 kilometers combined, which isn't good on its own, but I've been up over 16 liters per 100 kilometers this week. Just awful. And this thing runs on 91 octane, so it is going to be a very expensive fuel bill. And this fuel tank is massive. I filled up this morning. I only needed, I don't know, a little over a third of a tank to get it up to full, and it cost almost a hundred bucks. Now, 
Thankfully, that's not coming straight out of my pocket, but even so, I feel bad when Jody has to <laughs> approve these expenses because that ain't cheap. Anyway, getting back to the driving that I talked about off the top, I will say, in spite of how massive this thing is, it is super maneuverable. Now, no, you are not going to be able to park in the first row at the grocery store. That is a given. This thing is just huge. You're going to upset an awful lot of people if you're trying to get right up there next to those handicap spots. But I'm telling you, low speed maneuvers, way easier than you might imagine. This steering is very nice because out here cruising along these country roads, eh, there's a little bit of feel, a little bit of resistance. So you know what's happening. But when you're, I don't know, wheeling from lock to lock, backing into a parking spot or making a three or four point turn, no issues whatsoever. I like that a lot because it makes this a very manageable vehicle to drive, but it still has presence, not just because of its size, the style too. I really do like the way this thing looks. Not every little bit of it, but for the most part, it's a pretty sharp looking vehicle. It is a little bit slab sided. There's not much contouring to the body panels, but it looks kind of good. And even with that smaller version, I wasn't so crazy about those rear quarter windows. I thought they looked kind of awkward and frumpy. I don't know, maybe it's just because they're more proportional on this bigger one, but they look nice. And same thing with all this chrome on a smaller vehicle, it would definitely overwhelm it. But here it looks really nice. My one big issue, and yes, it is with this tester, but that doesn't matter because this rolled off the same assembly line as any other Grand Wagoneer. Just take a look at the strip that runs around the top, right around the tailgate. That misalignment, that is a big no-no to me. I'd be upset if I spent any amount of money on a vehicle and it ended up like that. That chrome makes it way more obvious and it's an even bigger problem in a vehicle that touches $140,000 before tax. To recap, I like how smooth the Grand Wagoneer L is, how much output its engine spins up, and the amazing massaging seats. I don't like that it's horribly inefficient, but that's about it. It definitely ain't cheap, but if you're looking for a luxury SUV with both space and substance, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer L is an excellent option. Yes, you should still cross shop it against the Escalade and the Navigator, as well as that Lexus LX if you don't need something quite so big. But if you're looking for premium without pretentiousness, this is a pretty great way to get it.